driver's assistance area. Driver's assistance booth. It's the same thing that's in the, uh, when you pull up, it's just the same thing. There's nobody assisting. What's up you guys, FSC Trucking. We're here in Maryville, Indiana, dropping off this snow plow. We've got three stops. Merrillville, Indiana, Michigan, and Michigan. Those generators go over to uh, Grand Rapids, and out there in Ferndale is where that crate goes. We're gonna kick it all off today. Ferndale is a rail yard and they'll take it as late as nine o'clock. So we got plenty of time. Ferndale's like in the Detroit area by the way. It's going. Oh, it's going. What year is your truck? 84. I don't see too many of them anymore. No, not too many. Like 400 million miles on it or not? Oh, a little over a million. It did a lot of sitting in its life. No, oh, not too many. As a matter of fact, I seen one this morning. It's a red one. Had like a flatbed on the back. You, uh, they had a car on it and it was towing a camber. I don't ask me if what what that does. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you.
Oh, we're doing another day, another dollar. Uh, flatheads anymore. Those are, I like those. Thank you. Oh, it's an 84. Is it? Yeah, the other guy was out here asking about it. I get a lot of that. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Got a new engine in it or just? No, it's the old one rebuilt. It's a 3406B cat. Oh. There's still, there's still actually a fairly common engine. Oh yeah. You got it. said there's a truck out front I have a truck of bodies coming dump bodies I got five coming so oh. like, uh, those are pain in the butt anywhere anywhere down the bottom is good Pressures now. Oh, that's all Michigan. Grand Rapids. Uh huh. Yep. You stay busy then, huh? Yeah. Right Try. You owner operator then, or? Oh yeah, I own that one. Yeah. How's, how's that doing? All right. That yeah, comes and goes. There's a lot Starting of to see it. People saying, "Well, the owner operators, I feel sorry for them. They ain't making much." Starting to see it back down a little. It's up and down as far as the volume goes. Fuel's just getting dumb. Is it? Yeah, well, they try to offset it best they can with fuel surcharge. I mean, that's why everything's getting pricey. I tell people all the time, you know, gas only moves your ass. Diesel moves the world. You got think, right. think about it. You know, the soccer mom or whatever, she goes to the store. She spent a very little on fuel with all that diesel fuel she bought. Everything from the farm field to the store was all moved by diesel from the picking manufacturing packing trucking all of it all the way with diesel first time any product sees gasoline is when you buy it and they take it home but all the news talks about is gas prices diesel went up what 40 cents in a week no one's seen nothing Why about it that's a fight product too uh, i think the oil company don't want to piss off the voter the soccer moms remember i think the oil company don't want to piss them off so it'll hammer it to diesel they'll pay for it at the grocery store but they're not educated enough to know that that's because true. they're not told this that is true right so here we are we know it but the average consumer don't but we're an industry but we're idiots we don't know nothing 
We didn't go to college for some gender studies thing. You got that. <laughs> Take it easy. Just do a big old Yui. All right, cool. Yeah, I can do that. Alrighty, boys and girls, got that done. Sweet. played out is we dropped off here Grand Rapids and then like I said out there in Detroit what uh, ended up happening was I never brought the trailer home after we went to Denver I did a short one and then uh, sadly I didn't film that I didn't think it was gonna be anything worth filming and it turned out I probably should have oops bad call on my part on that one dragging around on two tires that I took out west with me on the back of the trailer along with the freight. It ain't a big deal. Those size tires are very hard to find out there. That's why we bring them. In the west of Mississippi, we're always recommended with these ties, that size tires to uh, carry spares. been an absolute rat race back at home. So they built the Southridge Park here on a six-ton road. Now when you turn down this road, you'll, you'll see a sign as we pass it. It says weight limit six tons. A lot of times it's, you know, except for local delivery. That's where we deliver the plow, so you gotta be able to get to it. Well, when you turn down this road, it don't look like a road where you would take a truck. So it's slightly intimidating. Nonetheless, that's where the place is. That's how you get to it. Anyway, yeah, it's been really a hectic rat race at home, getting ready for our Midwest Coast trip. Razor, a Polaris Razor ready to go, and my older son Sean's Jeep ready to go. What we did is, uh, oh, a week or two ago, actually three by now, Sean, my oldest son, came in with his Jeep and he, he uh, flew home. The idea was to leave the Jeep with us. We're going to meet Matthew out in California. Yeah, I know about that. So we're going to meet Matthew out there in California. And then we're going to go to Glamis. I'm going to tow the Razor and my son's Jeep in the big enclosed trailer. 
Now, as of right now, there's no solid guarantee that Sean's going to be able to go. If he doesn't, then we're just going to leave the Jeep behind. But that's the plan anyway. But the big enclosed trailer really wasn't ready for hauling two cars. To be honest, it really wasn't ready to haul any cars. The problem with that trailer is the way they build them, they put the tie downs right into the plywood on the floor. And the plywood is really only held down by gravity and about 12 self-tapping sheet metal screws that go through the plywood into the cross members. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not strong enough to hold any weight. My son's Jeep Wrangler weighs about 4,700, 4,200 pounds. So if you slam on your brake, all that weight is getting yanked on the back two tie downs, which is only held down by one sheet of plywood and 12 self-tapping sheet metal screws. That Jeep is moving. And I know some people that that's happened to where the trailer tie down points failed. plywood move with it so what we did was we welded the tie down brackets direct to the frame and then I added a I added eight more tie downs to the trailer so I made these nice little c-shaped pockets and we welded that right to the frame as well Still breathing out of the one stack. 
I had the green APU put on. I had to delete the right side stack to make clearance. The pipe literally went where the APU currently is, so we had to change. I had to delete that side for the time being. We're going to go back to dual exhaust when I redo the exhaust system. But I might, before I do that, I might put another set of big pipes back here. Nothing really crazy big, but I gotta, I gotta look into that and see uh, what I want to do and how much that'll be. But there's other mods I want to do to the truck too and make my life a little easier. That's the other reason we're trying to get help with the shop is because there's a lot of stuff that can be done while I'm out and away. So I really have to start looking into how I handle the workload that I have at the shop when I'm busy doing other things. And even if we're working on the same thing, two people working on two separate, like example with the trailer, I was farting around figuring out a short in the trailer light wiring while she was welding my brackets that I had made together that I cut the steel and fabricated the shape and size of them. She welded them according to how I wanted them and then welded them to the trailer after we figured out exact placement and then uh, cut the hole in the floor and put the tie downs in with the four screw with the four bolts. So it was a whole process. But point is with two people working we were able to get a lot of work done at, you know, at the same time. So that'll definitely free up the shop a little bit. That's been my problem is lack of time. You know, we're just, I'm just at the point where I'm gonna have to start getting outside help to get done stuff while I'm away. I just can't do it all. for a considerable amount of time. The game plan is when we come back from Glamis, we're also hoping to stop by my mom and dad's for a few days. And then head back. Be gone almost a month. It's three to four days out, three to four days back. I don't know, two weeks basically in California and another week or just a little less at mom and dad's. Now I have a bunch of content that was filmed back in the summer before the green APU was installed. And I also have the content I'm filming now. Basically I'm hoping to do another round after this one as long as I'm back by the weekend, I'm golden.
one's all set for you. Yo. I think we're on the bottom of the big one there too. Oh, the big one. Yep. You're. There you go. Sweet. Thank you much.
Alrighty, boys and girls, got this one done. Now let's get on out of here. We got Ferndale left. That's it, that one little crate. The dispatch thought they closed at 2. Now I called two different places. Because the uh, company that they are doesn't have a direct phone number, so you gotta call another place. It's kind of weird, you gotta go through a pain in the neck. Yeah, that's close. It goes through a big stupid phone bank. It's a company, but it's they go to a rail yard, which is actually Canadian National. And when I got a hold of, uh, comes up on Google Maps with that address, it's CP Rail. I call that number and they said, yeah, they'll take it off until 2100, which is nine o'clock. So both customer service at ITS Technologies, you call that number, it goes to Illinois. But customer service at ITS says they take it till nine and Canadian National Railroad says they take it till nine. going to wind up being in the morning but they wanted it there Thursday and both places said till 9 so we'll find out once we get there I've been there before I do know that they're after 2 o'clock at least they used to be but it's been a long while like years ago so you go on the information you got and then roll with it One thought I had was to deliver there first and then work my way back and deliver these two stops that I delivered today. Deliver that tomorrow. But at least if I got that crate off. But I figured with accurate information, hopefully, we'll be able to unload everything in one day. I could get to the yard to load an outbound tomorrow, if even tomorrow afternoon. We'll see how it plays out. We might be burnt. We might not be. Let's see if that car tries to come around. It's like he's being smart about it. Kind of the truck from the left. Getting in here out of, oh Lord. Your bolt's gonna screw it up. Oh, I made it just fine. This trailer is long, it's 50 feet long, and them axles are all the way to the tail. You guys pulling 53 footers, put them tandems almost all the way to the back bumper to make turns. That's what these trailers are like.
96. Run that straight through Lansing. Bring a lot of stuff to Lansing. Well, not a lot, but a good amount of stuff coming out of Baltimore we take goes there. One phone call or uh, message from dispatch says, Oh, we heard that they were done it too. And I'm like, Yeah, I called two different places and they told me it was dying. So, obviously, in fact, I'm talking about it a bunch, it means I am worried about it to a degree. I just, yeah, GMC, why don't you just damn near sideswipe me?
trouble is, if I remember right, getting, like, figured out how to get in there. This is like a service road for Highway 102. My first time bringing Orwell here. And there's the train tracks. You can see the containers on the bridge. So we duck underneath the rail. Where I'm supposed to go? Not a clue. Far right. I was here, I wound up over there and I got all kind of hung up and twisted. Ultimately, after two hours of phone calls, which proved to be pointless, they, uh, even though this is mostly a container yard, and I was told by not only ITS, who ordered the freight, but Canadian National, that they took until 9 o'clock, 
the uh, in reality don't have a forklift driver after two. That would have been nice to know yesterday before I left. So I'm gonna sit the night here at the driver's assistance area and uh, order a DoorDash because at least I'm in a fenced in area. I'm not gonna park on the side of the street which is available right over there because to be honest, this is not the best part of town so I'm not gonna be out there. I'm gonna be right here. Well, I ordered DoorDash, I got KFC coming. So I'm gonna shut the big engine down, fire up the green APU and give me a nice siesta. They come in bright, bright and early, six o'clock in the morning. Worst case, uh, they come in a little earlier than that, rouse me out, I'll just go pull over by the maintenance shack. They'll unload me and I'll be out of here. boys and girls it's 5 30 in the morning supposedly the uh, shop maintenance side comes in at six so we're good to go uh, let's get the day started so yeah all these numbers different places I called you call this ITS technologies that's the Illinois number it's a phone maze most of these are phone mazes so I got a hold of a guy yesterday talking to the forklift driver the container not the forklifts those containers those cranes that move the big containers I spoke to one of them he called the guy over he got a hold of somebody that knew somebody and uh, told me that yeah the maintenance guys go home at two o'clock so supposedly to come in at six so we're gonna get pop straps and then drive up there. He said literally come in six o'clock in the morning in front of the green building and I'll just unload it. All right, cool. So let's get that done. Cut the APU off. Fire up the big one. It's like 37 degrees out. Yeah, a little crisp. I stayed right here in the driver assistance lot last night. I wasn't going to try to fight to find space at the TA. I said he was pretty sure I would be okay to park here. Be honest I really didn't care if I was or not I was gonna do it anyway I still think this is bullcrap you tell a guy nine o'clock oh we didn't know you were a con were in a container I specifically said I wasn't so I had a good place to park with bathrooms The other thing I did is I had the guy that talked to me last night. I had him write on my paperwork that I was in fact here on Thursday. And I explained to the his boss that the reason I scheduled the setup the way I did was based on what I was told on the phone the day prior. Lest I be accused of being late. They said they wanted it Thursday. I was here Thursday based on the information I was given. So I'm pretty sure the way this works is this is their 
stuff. In other words, they're not shipping it out. This is like they bought it. The container people. Nice frosty morning. Thing the plan is once we pull this unit off we're just gonna bounce to the ta since so today's friday and we're all the way out by detroit we're not gonna get to wisconsin and get an outbound so i'll give uh our dispatch a little time to find me some freight to pick up to go home with and deliver that monday if not we obviously are not going to spend the weekend in michigan Crate. We strap them tires down and bring them home, be done with them maybe. <laughs> Actually, just a couple positions could use tires. I got two of them that are barely legal, but they're legal. There are two more right behind them that are. Not long for this world either. All right, that's that. Throw the garbage out. It might be one in the driver's assistance area. Yeah, let me show you this joke. Driver's assistance booth. It's the same thing that's in the uh when you pull up it's just the same thing there's nobody assisting i spent 30 minutes in there yesterday on the phone working with my phone trying to enter information as if that was useful which it wasn't so you know i know after the second time being here in many years is come around through that where that gate is on the other side there's a hole in the road hole in the gate where the maintenance guys come in and out it's the, i was thinking like a high security in a port no it's a railroad so it's not like a port
A lot of cluster from yesterday. Yeah, you ain't tight kidding. Called to get a hold of you guys. That's funny. Can't get a hold of them with the number they give me. It's out of Illinois. Oh, After wow. a massive phone maze, they're like, yeah, they're here till nine o'clock. Even when I was very specific that I had a crate on a flatbed that I wasn't a container. Right. So when I got here, imagine trying to get a hold of somebody. <laughs> Who wants paperwork? Don't mind how my phone number's jobbled all up on there. I had enough. You need a signature somewhere? Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. There we go. Here, and we're down there. Yeah, so I just camped out over there at the driver's assistance yeah. area, which was no assistance, but it was a good parking spot. All right, you guys have a good day. What's the easiest way to get? I'm trying to get out that gate over right there. So, so I just back up and go. I was just gonna go out that gate right there. Yep, that's the easiest way. You'll get just, stuck at the gate if you try so to So just go back there. up. Or go all the way around the block. All right, cool. Yeah, so I'll, I'll be angling that the way too. Yeah. All right, sweet. All right, man. Thanks. Thank you. Have a great day. Let's get that tire strapped down and get out of here. here last it may have been an empty container oh man it was so long ago oftentimes we'll pick up even off the west coast we'll pick up a container bring it somewhere back into a dock we'll unload it like on a step deck matter of fact it would have been on my step deck the one that we're getting ready to redo now that I have a welder in the shop like a person, not a machine. I've always had machines. But, uh, I'm looking for a spot that needs to cross the tracks over here and then come back down the boulevard. Anyway, empty out the container and then you bring it back to wherever they'll accept the empty container. And that may have been here. memory in my head that I brought a container from Michigan, I mean to Michigan, from some place, fill in the blank, I really can't remember. And then it was a, you know, and I had to really hurry up. It was like one of those overnighted to unload it kind of deals. Because the place closed at whatever time, and then you had to race somewhere to get the container unloaded. Well, we getting ready to run out of room, homeboy. She going with that.
very poorly run operation. pick me up and set me up on top of those containers so I'll just I'll let him do his thing here's our unofficial gate here I know just to enter let's have a container enter that gate right there run bunny rabbit run Is that gate right there and them trucks are coming through it's all, autom all automated right so if you're dealing with containers you go through there and it's all automated you're going to maintenance you go around all of that bull crap and just go right through that gate where there's no guards just drive right up in the rail yard as if you own the joint which is against anything i ever knew well in the way quarter after six i'm unloaded get some editing done and I'll give uh, dispatch the opportunity to try to find me free to get me home 